So this is part two of uh, getting the Naze 32 Funfly hooked up and working. So I soldered on the pins. Um, there's lots of videos online, so uh, you know if you guys need to to figure out how to do that, just go online and search for how to solder pins onto a, onto a PCB board. So, anyways, um, I have it all hooked up to my my quad. This is my test quad that I usually use just to uh, throw new flight controllers or new um, I want to try out new ESCs or motors on. So, in this case, I'm going to try out the um, the Nays 32. <clears throat> so, I have my ESCs hooked up to the E to the motor outputs right here. This is for the receiver and it came with this cable and I have it hooked up to my receiver here and as you can see it has one wire that provides power and it hooks up to one to the one on my receiver so it goes one two three four five six seven eight all the way down so one is typically I think um, aileron and then you just follow the pin out on the board here one, two, three, four, five, and then you just plug the corresponding wire into your receiver. Because you can see that from two to eight, they're just the signal wire. There's no um, ground or power. So only one has power and ground, just so it provides power to your receiver. So, so anyways, that's the board all hooked up. Uh, I mounted it with some foam, double-sided foam, um, uh, vibration dampening foam that uh, I get from Hobby King and next I'm going to plug it into the computer and then I'm going to switch over to do a screen capture or um, a capture on the uh, on the computer and go through the settings that I use to get this board up and running I found this board much easier to set up than the multi Wii even though it's based on multi Wii it's a different flavor and it uses a different uh, software um, based on um, on a Chrome a Chrome app. Uh, it's the Base Flight uh, configuration uh, GUI. So um, the other thing is you want to power it up in order to um, get the receiver working. Because when you plug the USB in, it doesn't actually power the board so that you can calibrate the radio. But uh, I'll get into that in a bit. So I'm going to plug in the USB and plug in power to the copter. The other one last thing I should mention, and I can't stress this enough, take your props off or disconnect the leads to the ESCs when you're working on this on the computer. Because uh, when I was playing around with the receiver test, I actually did push over into the down and to the right, and the motors actually armed and they spun up. Um, because as the NAS32 comes with stock um, stock settings, default settings, the motors actually spin up when it's armed. So uh, you want to be careful about that. So be sure to take off the props or disconnect the ESCs. Okay, so next I'm going to plug it in and then uh, I'll be on the computer and I'll just go through the settings that I use to get this board up and running. Okay, I have the flight controller plugged into the computer and as you can see when I move the copter, this little block over here wreck is uh, corresponds to the copter direction and um, the accelerometer or the gyros. As you can see I'm in quad X mode. Um, now I'll just go through really quickly what I use to to get this copter up and running. I should also mention that this is the base flight software which I downloaded or I installed uh, from the Google Chrome store. Just do a search on base flight and uh, just install it. So um, when I connected it, I just uh, chose the COM port and I connect. I clicked connect up here so I can do disconnect. Also, when you're disconnected, you can uh, do firmware flash on the main page to to uh, update the firmware as well. So I clicked connect, and now I'm in the in the, uti the GUI utility to uh, change all the different various settings. So what I did is I went through and I calibrated the accelerometer, placed it on level surface like that it just uh, went through it uh, grabbed uh, the le new level point the calibrate the magnetometer I did that next so the compass um, 
if any of you are familiar with APM, you have to do kind of the little dance with the copter. Um, so you click on this and then rotate it on all its axes, 360 degrees. They have a setting here to back up and restore your settings. So once you get your copter in the way that it, you, you like, you can save your settings. Um, there's some, I'll mention some stuff here with the throttle setting that had to play with the receiver for the endpoints. Um, okay, so also I set up my motors, one, two, three, four, which corresponds to, on the copter, um, you can look it up in the guide, exactly the motor, the, how to plug in the motors. Um, I should say the manual on the Abuse Mark website. And it, it's quite simple, it just follows one, two, three, four, and then five, six if you're running like a hex. And I think there's a way to do even more motors too, but I think that's a, there's a different way of doing that, which I'm not 100% sure. It, it's important after you do all this stuff to save it, so that saves the, the EEPROM. Um, PID tuning, I haven't done anything yet. Maybe when I have, go on a, when I have the flight controller on a smaller copter, I might need to play around with these, but so far it seems to fly okay with the stock settings. So the, <coughs> excuse me, the receiver test. Um, this here, allows you to just check, make sure everything is plugged in correctly, and if not, you can go in and, you know, move the the receiver wires around just to, until, you know, your roll is indeed, you know, the aileron, um, you know, the pitch is the elevator, yaw, okay, and the throttle. And I should mention something about the endpoint. I had to adjust the endpoint on my transmitter down below a thousand in order to get this to, to work properly. And it's in relation to the throttle settings. I had to set this to a thousand, equivalent to the min command for this to work right now. You're supposed to have about 800, I think, between all of this, between the minimum and the maximum. I have 850, but it seems to work fine. Um, maybe I'll troubleshoot that a little bit more, but right now it seems to fly great, and I, I don't have any issues with it. Um, I'm sure someone will chime in that knows a little bit more about that, or maybe what I'm doing wrong, but uh, it seems to be working just fine. I have my auxiliary switches hooked up. Um, so I have auxiliary one hooked up to a freeway switch, which I'll get to here in the next section. Uh, over here, you can change around your throttle midpoint, your throttle expo. I had I didn't need to do anything with that. Um, seems to work just fine. So over an auxiliary configuration, this is where you hook up. Um, your flight modes. So you can do an arm by arming it on a switch. I don't. I use, I like doing to the right and down on the throttle to arm. So angle, angle is basically auto level, like on the KK2. Horizon is basically um, auto level, but with uh, you you can go past the 45 degrees, so you can do flips and rolls and stuff like that. And then you can do the barometer, which is altitude hold, I believe and I have it hooked up to the angle mode as well. So there's auto level and um, altitude hold. So that's just hooked up to the freeway switch. And it's very simple. You just check off, click off the setting that you want, have the switch in that setting. And you know, low, medium will be horizon, high will be altitude hold. And then you click save. It's pretty straightforward. So remember to save it once you, you set that up. Servos, I don't do anything with that. GPS, it's kind of cool that you can hook a GPS up to this uh, flight controller, which I don't have. Motor testing, um, here you can go in and if you check off this, you can, you can throttle up the motors just to see if everything is um, spooling up at the same time. If not, there's a way to adjust your motors. Um, you can, there's a, there's a guide here. This guy here posted a guide on how to uh, calibrate your ESCs. Um, right within the GUI, with the base flight GUI, and I'll post a link in the description below for any of you that need to know how to do that. Um, raw sensor data, data, just um, all the sensors on board, and then just their status. The CLI mode, the command line interface mode, this is where you might have to come in and set a few things. Um, now, something that I did set was feature motor stop. And there's, you just look it up online, there's all kinds of guides on this. Um, but this feature motor stop enables the motor stop function, which when you arm the board, the motors don't spin. Whereas you can, if this is off, um, the motors will spin. And I like the motors not to spin when I arm it, so it's a personal preference. Um, something else I should mention, that um, I eventually want to use this flight controller in a hex. 
in a mini hex so um, you can change the mixer which is basically the the motor configuration here so if you type in just mixer it says the current mixer is quad x which is the quad x but I can also do mixer um, list and it lists all the different um, configurations you can do and to switch between them you just type in mixer space and then I want to do say a hex 6 um, enter and then it sets it to hex 6 now when you click away it will save and reboot the flight controller and then when we go back into initial setup you can see now right over here it is indeed a hex 6 I'm gonna go back in and change it back to uh, a quad X so mixer quad X anyways it sets it back now basically that was just a quick and dirty uh, overview of what I did to get this flight controller up and running and flying um, I did all of the things that I just showed you and the quad flew no problem so I have to say that this flight controller is really easy to uh, get going compared to the multi -Wii. Um hopefully this helped you out or at least gave you an overview or maybe uh, give you an idea of uh, you know if you don't really know what you're doing you can still get this NAS32 to fly with uh, just a little bit of research and troubleshooting um, like I said it took me maybe well I think it took me 10 maybe 20 minutes at the most to get this uh, flight controller running uh, once I got it all uh, hooked up on the copter so uh, relatively pain free compared to a multi wii which I'm still struggling with the flip as I mentioned okay next will be a flight video okay I'm just gonna do a quick test flight just to show you that it works um, so I have it in horizon mode right now which is basically auto level but you can go past the 45 degree to do flips and rolls and stuff like that um, so I'll arm it as you can see the light comes on give it throttle Anyways, this flight controller seems to have really good resolution for the controls. I find it much better than the KK2, and it might be because it's 32-bit uh, instead of 8-bit. Um, so, anyway, so far I seem very happy with it, and I like that it's nice and tiny, which is my intended purpose, is it will go on uh, a mini quad or a mini hex. Um, so stay tuned, um, I have a mini hex uh, on order. Uh, frame and I'm going to um, try putting this board on it and uh, but so far I'm quite happy with it it seems to work really well um, so anyways give it a try if you're looking for something um, looking for something uh, a different type of flight controller uh, besides a KK2 but uh, it doesn't seem too hard for setting up it's certainly much and I can't emphasize this much simpler than multi Wii. Um, for me, I had problems setting up the the Flip Pro, um, I'm, and I still haven't had any uh, had any luck getting it to fly properly. So, anyways, the Nase 32. Um, I have to say, after reading all the reviews and what people have been saying online, yeah, definitely a great flight controller. Thanks for watching.